All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm Joya Goodrum with the McMinnville Area Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank all of our candidates for uh, showing up today for this uh, candidate forum for the McMinnville School District uh, number 40. And of course, I would like to introduce our uh, moderator for this evening, Lucetta Elmer. She is a former board chair here with the chamber and has been on the board of the Christian uh, McMinnville Christian Academy and um, owns three businesses here in town, uh, the Douglas on 3rd, Union Block and the Oak. I'm going to turn it over to her because we don't have a lot of time. And so I'll give it to you, Lucetta, take it away. Thank you. Thanks for everybody for being here. Welcome candidates and guests to the candidate forum for McMinnville School District 40 board. We appreciate your willingness to be here today and for your commitment to the education of our children. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond to the question and then it will go to the next candidate. To give each one a chance to go first, we will start each question with a different candidate. Due to time constraints, a timer will be set for each candidate. And once their two minutes are up, we will turn off their mic to allow the next one their chance. For the candidates, please be respectful of time and of each other and let us begin. Our first question, please tell us about yourself and do you have children or have you had children in the school district? Sorry, you each have 30 seconds to respond to this question and let's begin with Carson, Benner, Jason. Oh, sorry, we're gonna begin with Carson. Thank you, I've got um, Harley Davison's in the background, sorry for the noise. Um, I have proud parent of two McMinnville High graduates, one's at OSU and one's graduated from DePaul back doing the COVID job search. Oh, Barbara? Oh, same, trying to unmute myself, but I'm not having any luck. I can hear you. Okay. Right, my name is Barbara Carter. I was originally born and raised in Idaho. I moved here when my husband got a job here. When I came here, there were 15,000 people in the city of McMinnville. So I have a long history with the city of McMinnville. I've seen it grow from a small town into a tourist destination. <laughs> when I first arrived here, I worked at Cascade Steel. I worked there for 10 years. And I worked as a, a chemist in the lab. Um, Following. Barbara. Sorry, I had time was up. Okay, all right. Uh, Raul. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Raul Medrano. I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. Um, I'm a father of two young children, three and six. Uh, I'm married to a school teacher for 14 years here in the school district. I own and operate a small county uh, tax for here in town. Buenas noches, buenas tardes a todas las personas que están ahí. Quiero decirle gracias a la Cámara de Comercio por atendiendo este evento. Es, me llamo Raúl Medrano. Tengo dos niños pequeños de edades tres y seis. Time. Y me... Thank you. Yanira. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Yanira Vera. And um, I've lived in Yamhill County for about, I would say, more than 20 years. Um, enjoy seeing uh, Mrs. Elmer because she was one of the instructors when my kids used to go to Linfield Pre-K. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> um, I have two uh, kids, a son and a daughter, and they're both MHS graduates. Um, and they're both studying currently at BYU-Idaho. Thank you. Abby. Hi, my name is Abby Warmbier. I was a middle school math and science teacher for seven years after graduating from Linfield back when it was a college. Um, and my husband is also a teacher. He teaches English at Dayton. We have two children that are three and six. So we will have children in the district for the next 15 years. And I'm currently a stay at home mom and community volunteer, but I will also be starting graduate school in educational policy and leadership next month. Time. And finally, Jason. Good evening. My name is Jason Bazan. Uh, my wife and I are both uh, native Oregonians and both McMinnville High School graduates of class of 94. 
after we finished our college degrees, we wanted to return back to our hometown and start our family. We have a freshman high schooler uh, and a seventh grader at Patton. I am the West Coast General Manager for Bailey Nursery. My wife is a nurse manager at Albany General Hospital. I am the president of the McMinnville Junior Baseball Organization, which is a member of this chamber. I'm a proud Hi. volunteer. Thank you. Question number two, why are you running for the school board? You each have two minutes to respond to this question. And for this question, let's begin with Barbara. My personal reason is because I believe in giving back to the community. I have a long history of volunteering with mental health, children's services, and Henderson House. When I retired, I wanted to name, maintain my connection with the students and with the schools. I felt having worked in the district for so long, I could bring an inside perspective to the board. On another level, level I am running for the board to help our new super, superintendent transition uh, to our district. In this chaotic and unprecedented year, a smooth and orderly change of leadership would be best for our students, parents, and staff. I have the experience and historical perspective to help ease this transition and also to bring our students back to full in-school edu in education. Thank you. Raul? Um, why am I interested in running for the board? Well, like I said, I am a, I'm a father of two young children and I know they're beginning their formal education here in McMinnville. I want to be, create the best possibilities I can for all children here in McMinnville. Uh, like I said, also that I have a wife that has been teaching bilingual uh, education here in McMinnville for 14 years. And I also see how hard she, she tries to do both uh, English and Spanish with the students. And I wanna bring ideas and expertise from our educators in making decision processes in the district. I also wanna become more involved with the community. Um, like I stated, I have an owner of a small business uh, accounting and tax preparation here in town. I wanna give more support for the Latino X community here in town. Great, thank you. Jason, why are you running for the school board? Well, before I begin, I, I wanna finish my opening address and thank uh, my fellow candidates for being here and thank you to the chamber for having us. So I wanted to get that out there. Um, I've attended the school board meetings for multiple years uh, and even um, during the COVID Zoom links. Um, in my mind, there's a lot of opportunities to improve some antiquated processes, um, some communication opportunities to our community. And um, in some examples, um, they were very poor in my experience. And as a community member, I found them very challenging. Um, even today, I think there's some community members that feel somewhat disenfranchised and, and somewhat confused about any interaction with the process. Um, I would like you know, to you know, work on improving the culture of the school board within our community. Um, I have children in this district. I want this district to be the best that it can be. We can always get better. Um, if, if I can lend my skill set and contribute, then I feel it's my obligation to put my name in the hat and be part of the process and, uh, and success and help with the challenges where I can. Great. Yanira. Yes, thank you. Um, so I became uh, a part of the school district board um, about months ago. Um, and at that time when I originally applied um, as a past, um, as a parent of past graduates, what it is to um, your kids um, struggle, you could say, in certain ways, in many different ways, even though they're very, uh, they could be good achievers and the role that parents play as well as um, instructors, teachers, and all the supportive services at the schools play in a student's life. And as a Latina, I wanted to make sure that I could also be a voice to um, that culture, that population, to our communities of color, and show them that it is to uh, be there for your kids and how they can be a part of their lives throughout their um, progress as they're going through the, you know, through their grades. 
um, I have appreciated the opportunity to be in the board um, and learn how the things that I have learned as well as contributed. I believe that it's important to give back to the community. And I believe in the mission that the school district already has in making sure that they are achieving excellence in education for our students. I know it's gonna be very 30 difficult seconds. at this time with a new superintendent. And I look forward to just like being a part of the hiring process to also being a part of the transition process. Thank you. Abby, why do you wanna run for the school board? Well, as we all do, I want to serve our community. This is a four year volunteer position for those of you listening that don't know this. Um, it's not for any power or glory or fame. Um, so I appreciate that all six of us are running for this position and in a friendly way also. Um, my strengths to give back to the community though are in education, community, organi community organizing, um, and communication. And so as Jason said, I think that communication between the district and parents could be improved. And um, like some others said, the board should be diverse and it should be representing who is in our community. Right now, the board doesn't have any uh, members that are parents of young children or former teachers. So I would be bringing that perspective in. Um, and then why now? Mostly the same reasons with the new superintendent. There's a great opportunity for change. And then in the post-COVID world, going back to school, there's so many decisions that will be made. And it's a great opportunity for renewal, for reevaluation of what we do well and what needs to be improved on. Um, and then personally, for my children and for my neighbors, I want to make sure that the school district that already is great continues to be great for the next decade. Abby, thank you. Carson, you're rounding us out on this question with why are you running for the school board? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a school board nerd. I started attending school board meetings before I even had children in school. I thought that's what you did. It wasn't until later that I found out that that was kind of weird, but um, been volunteering with the school district for more than 15 years, helping pass bonds. Um, and it just felt like it was my turn to step up. Um, uh, public education is fundamental to a democracy. And uh, what I think I can contribute is um, helping uh, provide uh, leadership to um, in the district, um, there, there's so many things that we're doing right. There's so many opportunities for us to do things better. And um, I think continuing the legacy that we built on and improving, uh, making sure we're stay, stay laser focused on equity and uh, doing what's best for all kids in the district. Great, thank you guys. All right, your third question is given the very challenging and unprecedented circumstances and diverse opinions amongst school personnel, the community, businesses, students, and their families, how have you or will you work to create learning opportunities for all students in the district? You'll have two minutes each. And for this one, let's start with Jason. That's a tough question. Um... I think first, uh, we must assure that our experts and our educators in our district feel safe when um, giving their opinions um, and having the support to be flexible. Um, you know, our, our leadership culture has got to be allowed to have two-way communications and solutions. Um, and I believe that these learning opportunities will, will be enhanced through that. Okay, thank you. Barbara? I'm sorry, would you repeat the question? Yes, let me, it's a long one. Given the very challenging and unprecedented circumstances and diverse opinions amongst school personnel, the community, businesses, students, and their families, how have you or will you work to create learning opportunities for all students in the district? Our district is very focused on every student. At the secondary level, every adult is responsible for 
touching base and forming a relationship with a small number of students. We want every student to have an adult they can reach out to. Elementary students form bonds with their teachers and staff. Students are given assessments to identify their academic needs. Data teams made up of grade level teams uh, meet and collaborate on best methods to meet these needs on an individual basis. Every student is looked at through an equity lens. This allows teachers to ascertain which each student needs to be successful. These needs are not equal. Some students need more to be successful. Some uh, additional support is given when needed. Educational philosophy has changed over the years. It used to be that the teacher taught the class and it was up to the student to get the material. Today, we are student focused. Mistakes are learning opportunities. By individualizing education, each student is given the opportunity to be successful. Are you done, Barbara? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Right, thank you. Okay, Raul. Um, first, I just want to listen to all the stakeholders of the community, teachers, students, families, administrators, business owners, and have a unique perspective on, and opinions on what our kids need. Use the expertise of educators to help make decisions within our schools. I want to visit our schools on a regular basis to have a better understanding of uh, what I like to learn and work with the McMinnville School District. I also want to learn. Um, as a first time running to this position, I want to be aware of the needs of the community by reaching out, especially to families that we don't usually hear from, ask questions to understand, to make sure equality is at the forefront of our decision and, make, and making progress. I want to also list, lift up the voices of unprecedented students, uh, families in McMinnville, Latinx, to do more with bilingualism and cultures and community and make sure that we have equitable education for all. Thank you. Carson. Uh, thank you. I think it, um, I, I, as the other candidates were talking, I was rereading that question uh, again and again and again, and there's just so much wrapped up in there, but I think it's just a focus on equity. Um, we need to make sure that every child who walks into our school or the children that can't get to our school are given the opportunity. And doing that and putting that equity lens against everything we, every decision we make, when we're hiring someone, we need to be thinking about equity. When we're making decisions about menus, we need to be thinking about equity. When we're making decisions about curriculum, we need to be thinking about equity. And if we keep that focus, we can create a culture where all students are given an opportunity to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Abby? Yeah, I uh, read the question differently as well, but focusing on creating learning opportunities for all students. Um, so this year I thought that it was great that parents had um, surveys and got to choose how their students were going to be learning. Um, but a lot of that has been dictated by the state, like currently um, making CDL still an option that districts have to um, <clears throat> have for families to be able to choose from. And that's just really stretching staff thin. It's making a lot more work for teachers. And so I'm hoping that the state will not require that next year um, moving forward that we can still embrace alternative educational forms if that online lear learning worked really well for some students. Um, but that might not be the best thing for the district to do. Um, so I, I would hope that there could be statewide programs like there's been K-12 before, um, or if the educational service district could provide an e, a CLD option, sorry, CDL option, that'd be great. Um, there's also a lot of COVID relief money going towards summer programs, both accelerating learning and also enrichment. And so I would hope that those programs that get started this summer would be able to continue. And then it also asks, what have you done this year? Um, as a board member at McMinnville Play School, which was previously just a preschool, we created a kindergarten enrichment in-person class for a small group of students to be able to meet and socialize. 
Um, so that was actually a lot of work to keep up with everything and change locations and hire a new teacher for that. Um, and just for a small group, so I want to be able to reach thousands of students with the work that we do in the McMinn Middle School District. Thank you. And finally, Yanira. Okay. Um, so what are we planning to do to work to create learning opportunities? I think it's what you stated. Yes. Um, first of all, it's it, being that it's been a very difficult year, not just for parents, uh, students first, um, but also educators. Um, I think everyone has been very innovative and creative in finding ways to continue that enrichment process for students. And um, this coming year, what I would see in helping with that learning um, opportunities, first of all, is looking for ways and hoping that these students will be back in school um, safely with yeah, educators full time next year. Um, hopefully, because the uh, 2019, there was a Student Success Act that was placed that was going to help with uh, disparities that had occurred or were occurring in within the students. Um, that will be able to continue enhancing the lives of students if we when we return to school. And I look for ways of finding um, all these resources that can help not just the students, but also the educators and parents in making them have a successful learning uh, return. Um, it will be a different- 30 seconds. Because you will have to evaluate what the year of not being fully in school has done and being able to cope with that with their new learning that they're gonna do. Great, thank you. Question number four. How do you see the school district working in conjunction with the business community to address workforce needs and the future of work in our community? You have two minutes and we will begin with Raul. Um, I think reaching out to the business communities to hear from them what is a good employee, um, like what kind of skills do they have, support our teacher in teaching those skills, maybe like time management, organizational, critical thinking, problem solving, um, what they can apply, you know, in the field out there. Invite businesses to the community, to our schools, career days, interviews, um, uh, high school level strengthen our pathway programs, including local businesses. Like, like, like I stated earlier that I have a accounting business firm here in this town. I mean, I would like for one of the students to come and you know, see how it is a day in, in a life and uh, working in an office, working a day in, in life, you know, from the morning to the afternoon and having that opportunity for kids, to everyone to have that opportunity to do. Thank you. Um, let's move on to Yanira. Um, the role I see that businesses can play um, in students would be one of the ways I have seen it play a role is the opportunities it has provided for the students already with the pathway programs that they have, especially in the high school and their collaboration that they've had um, with the elementary schools um, in serving them um, in many ways when they are promoting um, some of the programs that they're doing. I think there's more that can be done, um, especially with um, uh, all these new opportunities that we need to teach uh, the trades that have been lost um, in education and hopefully uh, businesses can play a role in being creative and finding a way of um, connecting with the schools so that those trades cannot continue to be lost. Um, and um, I think that in the past there has been a 
advance advancements in that. Um, I'm so excited that the horde, I don't know if I'm saying this right, horticultural classes will come back. Um, and that was something that had been taken away and that it plays a huge role here in Oregon for us. And so that's how I see that businesses can be interactive with our students. Thank you. Abby. Yes, I think that one of the strengths that I bring um, is that I haven't lived in McMinnville forever and I didn't go to school here. I actually went to school all over the United States. And so when I lived in Alabama, we had what was called an intercession. Um, and it was in the spring every year in high school where we had a whole week with no school. And um, ninth, 10th and 11th grade, that was a whole week of internship. And then there was also, um, you know, writing reports and reflecting on that, but, um, you know, it was built into the educational system and then senior year um, that was used, it could be used for college searching um, and going on tours. So um, I think that I can just bring some different fresh ideas. And then also with CDL as an option, like I said before, if some students um, thrived with online learning, having that flexibility for high school students to be able to work um, different shifts during the day and do school at different times um, and be flexible, I think that that could help the current workforce in the community. Uh, I think that's all. <laughs> okay, thanks, Abby. Carson. Thank you. Um, I'm just super, super excited about this one because uh, what McMinnville schools have done really well is prepare students for the world, whether that's college or careers. What we've failed at over and over again, and we can't seem to crack the nut is, is that transition period from the stage at graduation into the workforce. These kids are phenomenally talented and we can't seem to push them into the workforce. And there's dozens of opportunities to do that where we have um, employers spending more time at the school and students spending more time with employers in the construction industry, which I'm familiar with. There's just a huge shortage of talented kids and there's good paying jobs out there. And that's across the board. That doesn't have to be just construction. Um, and it doesn't have to be just high school graduates. Why don't we have 10 students graduating from McMinnville High School going directly to Linfield and then going directly back into the classroom as teachers. You know, it, it should just be a, a uh, assembly line. And we could do that with all the different trades. Um, and I think that it's, we, we've done the hard part. We did the hard part of getting our education system to be outstanding and getting the kids to be the point where they are, when they, when they do graduate, they're hugely talented. The, the tough part is, is to keep that motivation 30 seconds in, and, and bridge it into the workforce. So I think that there's a, a, a ton of opportunities there. And what I will say about the district is we're working on all of those. But you, in, in, until you get to the point where you have talented kids graduating, it doesn't do any good to make connections into the workforce. Thank you. Thanks, Carson. Jason. Um, I think uh, we're all in alignment on this. Um, you know, labor for the agriculture sector right now is is uh, impeding growth, and our ability to hire um, for you know general labor all the way up to middle managers has has really been challenged. We there's just nobody that's interested. Um, we try to encourage hiring high school kids throughout the year, especially during the summer. Um, I think you know from a from a private sector business agriculture standpoint, reaching out to the business community and soliciting op open feedback, um, open-ended feedback and getting some feedback from your local businesses on what they are looking for in, in hiring. Um, possibly have a task force that, that addresses these needs to create more community involvement and, and make our, our business community feel a part of the conversation. Um, you know, I think we can intensify, I think like Carson talked about, intensify our high school internship program where students get placed in industry or business as, as part of their pathway um, credits. Um, I've, I've read a little on the programs and, and the partnerships with businesses and it, it potentially morphs into summer jobs. Um, 
you know, I think also, a, again, a greater commitment from business to come in and talk about what they do. Um, maybe not in the office setting, but, uh, you know, maybe in, in other settings like, like, you know, construction or, or welding or fabrication or, you know, bringing trade people into the schools and spark that, that, that plant that seed that starts to build that seconds. desire. Um, and what could be waiting for a graduate, a graduating student, um, college isn't for every student. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Business education collaboration is a concept whose time has come. We need business working with our schools. Our students need business working with our schools. We need you to provide internships, apprenticeships, experiences, and scholarships. For our part, we need to provide training and experiences that meet the community workforce needs. Our Pathways program provides training in several different areas. We have welding and fabrication, construction, 3D printing, fire and EMT training, culinary arts, business marketing and finance, engineering, education, health services, natural resource management, computer science, and others. These are high level classes. These are not your wood, sh wood, wood shop or home ec classes. Our health service students have worked at the hospital. Our culinary art students are some of the best chefs in town. Attend one of their dinners and you will find out. It would be great if they could be working with the community in restaurants. Um, wouldn't it be great if our construction class build a house or shelter? We could teach them the construction, all the construction trades. Wouldn't it be great if we had a plumbing program or an HVAC program and an electrical problem? Wouldn't it be wonderful if one of our engineering students could work with an engineer? There are opportunities everywhere. Our collaboration would open doors for our students and we could work together to provide the workforce needs in our community. We just have to talk, collaborate, and get together. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. For the fifth question, you'll have two minutes to answer. Tell us about your vision for the district regarding the needs of a diverse population. And we'll begin with Yanira. So, um... That I, I think that's my biggest focus point. Um, a diverse population we have already, and I, I believe it's gonna to continue to grow. Um, it is very important um, that we continue in looking for ways on how to improve um, our successes with first making sure that uh, the staff is diversified to represent also the students. Um, it motivates students to see that as well and it helps them see what the future can be. Um, it's very important to continue to um, understand what diversity means. And a lot of that would have to be an instructional means for um, administration as well as the staff and even students understanding what diversity means. So there can be a combined collaboration and understanding and continue seeing um, benchmarks being met within the students. Um, diversity is also understanding the programs, not just academically, but also physically. The, the importance that there is in diversifying the needs for the students, um, 30 seconds, physical health with ensuring that the sports are being maintained as well as looking this at the special needs components um, for special needs learning at the schools. And I think all those points will be very important for us to continue being equitable and diversifying our schools in the district. Thank you. Abby, tell us about your vision. 
Um, I agree that we already have a diverse community and I just wanted to share a little bit of my background teaching in Pullman, Washington. Um, I had about 30% Asian students and that was um, a really different makeup. And so I had to be trained in um, working with some students who had just come from the Middle East and didn't speak a word of English. And so I know as uh, what teachers are going through um, with students who are learning languages. Um, this year, and especially yesterday, with everything that has happened with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, teachers need to have a strong training um, in diversity education and how to have hard conversations with students, because if they aren't comfortable talking about it themselves, then they can't talk about it with students. Um, and teach them appropriate language. You have to actively teach anti-racism to make sure that racist viewpoints don't win out over them. Um, as Jarena was saying, diversity um, is not just in ethnicity though. It's also in disabilities and gender identity. Um, and so again, um, hiring and hiring staff that is different um, the, that representation really matters in what children are seeing. And then um, as far as parents, making sure that we have translation for parents, which I think that the district has done a really good job of providing Spanish translation. But again, if there's other languages that need translation as well, then we should be reaching out to those parents. Thank you. Carson, tell us your thoughts. I want to do just what Abby and Naren said. Uh, really, the the same thing. I think that the, you know, frankly, it's replacing middle-aged white guys like me on the board. Um, uh, we need to have diversity from the top to the bottom. And and when I talk about those the pathways to get the kids off the graduation step into the workforce, you know, we should be really laser focused on having our uh, Spanish students getting into college and becoming teachers in our classrooms. Um, that would immensely improve the success of our focus on diversity. And as Abby said, it's not just race, it's diversity in all aspects. And there's so much more we can do in that regard. And I think it goes back to just using that equity lens with every decision you make and every, every process you go through is this best for all of the students. Thank you. Thanks, Carson. Um, Jason, what are your thoughts on this topic? Well, first, I want to recognize the district who was recently named uh, a National School of Excellence by the ACT Center for Equity and Learning. Um, that says a lot about those educators and their approach to the diverse populations that they serve already. Um, so a, a big congratulations to the district and, and those educators. Um, you know. McMinnville is not what it was when I went to school. I understand that. My vision is very broad based vision that, that focuses on the unique diversity of, of what McMinnville looks like now. Um, we are truly, in my opinion, we are different. And I think we should thrive in that differences and be proud to be different. Um, we have a great wine industry, tourist industry, uh, but yet still a strong agriculture history. Um, we have a steel mill, dental manufacturers, um, you know, the list goes on and on. Small businesses that, that are locally supported and cherished. Um, this community is very diverse in, in very many ways. And, and, th and those, those kids go to this school and are a part of our lives um, on a daily basis. Thank you, Barbara. You're muted, Barbara. <clears throat> We have a 60% poverty rate in our schools. My vision is that we provide the education and training that allows every student to follow their dream and find a way out of poverty and to into family living wage jobs. This strengthens our families and it strengthens our community. My dream is that we identify the needs of each student and private and provide for his or her success. When we speak of diversity, we are not only speaking of just racial or ethnic uh, diversity. We are speaking of learning disabilities. We are speaking of English language learners. 
We are thinking of poverty. We are thinking of homeless children. We are thinking of foster children. It is my dream that we reach out and help each and every one of these groups so that they can be successful and improve their lives for their future. When I was working, I would see some of the students I had worked with hanging out on Third Street. <clears throat> no job, no hope, no chance of a future. My dream is that we reach them before they wander downtown. My dream is to give them a future, whether it be a college or technical job. I want second. them to have a plan for their future and the knowledge to get there. We have made great inroads since that time with our students, but there is still work to do. My, my dream is to give every child a future. Okay, thank you, Barbara. So for our final question, I'm going to give each of you 30 seconds to just give us any final thoughts that you have. And I want to start this one with Abby. Um, I don't have notes for this one. So McMinnville is a great place to live and to work. I, I chose to be here to raise my family and I am passionate about education. I am invested in making the school district um, great as we get out of uh, the pandemic. And I just hope that I am able to serve and be part of the board and contribute. Thanks. Abby, thank you. Jason, do you have any final thoughts you wanna share? Um, I don't. I, I, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm very honored and humbled to, to be a part of this process um, with some really great candidates. It, it, it's good to see um, people wanting to step up and be part of this process. Um, I, I think it's really important that people get involved, and, and that's part of why I'm here. Um, I think it's, it's, it's time that we as a community contribute where we can and uh, and be involved where we can. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jason. Carson, any final thoughts to share? Uh, no, thank you, uh, Chamber, for the opportunity. And thank you, um, Echo Jason's comments. Uh, it's just uh, wonderful that there are other people wanting to do the same thing that we're doing and uh, keep making it education in Winville a uh, top priority. So thank you. Thanks, Carson. Barbara, do you have some final thoughts to share with us? Yes, McMinnville is a great school district. We are admired and looked up to from other districts in the state. We have made great inroads and won many awards. Many of our leaders have been recognized. I want to stay and be a part of this district to help it grow more with our new superintendent, to continue our successes, and to include our community with our educational system to provide more opportunities for our students. I want to thank Hi. you for hosting this. Thanks, forum. Barbara. Raul, any final thoughts? Yes, uh, I didn't get to answer the diversity question. Oh, well, there's. let's do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, no problem. Um, I was like, for you? <laughs> You're being so patient. Thank no you. Um, I, like I said, diversity, whatever is commenting, is uh, it is changing here. Like I said, I moved up here from the LA area um, in 2004, and moving up here was a culture shock for me um, for not having that many Hispanic people looking around. I want to see diversity in our students as a positive, not a negative. I want to encourage home languages. If they could speak Spanish at home, continue speaking Spanish at home, not just the opposite, trying to speak English. Um, also embrace teachers and for students who are, and to give them the tools for them in the way for them needed to our diversity to grow. Um, like I said, growing, growing up in LA, it's mostly minorities 
and coming here, uh, the Hispanic community was the minority and wasn't, uh, I feel it wasn't represented the Latin X community. Yeah. And then for my closing remarks, I mean, I'm excited if I get the opportunity to work with the school district. Um, I look forward, you know, as my children grow and to be in the school district, I want to make change and also like, you know, have opportunities to work with the Hispanic community and those people in, in the school district. Well, thank you. And again, I'm sorry. Um, I'm glad that you had a chance to answer that last question. I apologize for missing you on that one. Um, but to all of you, thank you very much. It was stated at the beginning that this is sort of a labor of love. It's not a paid position. It is something that each of you have thought long and hard about to say, hey, do I want to give back to my community and to the students and even run for this and put yourself out there? So I just want to say a big thank you for, to each of you for even stepping up and, and entering this. Um, the McMinnville Area Chamber of Commerce thanks you for joining us today for the MSD 40 Candidate Forum. Thank you candidates for being here, for answering some tough questions. You all did a very good job and we appreciate you. A reminder to everyone, the election is on May 18th. Ballots will be mailed out on April 28th, so next week. Thank you and best of luck to the candidates. Thank you. Thank you candidates. We did record this and it will be posted on the chamber website. Lucetta Elmer, thank you for being our moderator. Diane, thank you for being our timer. And uh, Rhonda, thank you for being our gatekeeper. Appreciate all of you. And as Lucetta said, thank you for stepping out. I know you have a meeting to go to, so you got a few minutes before that one starts for the candidates. Thank you so much. Stay well. Thanks, Joya. <laughs>